The Bolivian president, Luis Arce Catagora, arrived in Venezuela to attend to the third Bolivia-Venezuela Joint Integration Commission. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg visits Kiev for the first time since the launch of the Russian special operation in February last year. And despite a new ceasefire announcement, violent clashes persist in Khartoum, the capital of Sudan. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada, and these are the news. The Bolivian president, Luis Arce Catacora, arrived on Thursday at Venezuela's Simón Bolívar International Airport in Maiquetía to promote bilateral integration and cooperation. The Bolivian head of state will attend to the third Bolivia-Venezuela Joint Integration Commission to consolidate important mutual cooperation agreements for the benefit of both countries. The parties are expected to sign around 10 agreements to ratify relations at bilateral level. In this sense, Bolivian Foreign Minister Rogelio Mayra stated that the Joint Integration Commission has been working for several months on preparatory meetings through sub-commissions focusing their attention on political and social spheres as well as economic and commercial issues. In Colombia on Thursday, local authorities reported an explosion of a mine in the municipality of Cucumba in the department of Cundinamarca, where at least 11 miners were trapped. The explosion affected the mines of El Roble, Condor, and El Manto, which are connected. The governor of the department, Nicolas Garcia, reported that only four of the trapped miners have been rescued so far and assured that the fire department, the Red Cross, and the local rescue forces hold salvage tasks in the area and stress the complexity of the rescue because of the amount of toxic gases in the place, which could have been the cause of the explosion. Cugumba is a municipality located about 90 kilometers from Bogota and belongs to a region in which there are several towns whose economy largely depends on coal mine exploitation. In Brazil, photos showing children learning how to shoot have sparked a wave of social outrage. The snapshots were published and later deleted by the hunting and shooting club in the city of Hatay, in the Brazilian department of Goiás, after a children's shooting training course. Many Brazilian families are distressed and shocked after the string of attacks against schools perpetrated by minors or teenagers. One of the first measures adopted by Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva when he came to power was to suspend new gun registrations by hunters, shooters, and collectors, and to reduce the limits for the purchase of these devices and their ammunition. On Thursday, the Auditing Commission of Ecuador's National Assembly will hear new testimonies in the impeachment trial against President Guillermo Lasso, accused of embezzlement. For the third day of hearings, State Comptroller General Carlos Rio Frio, Petro Ecuador Manager Maria Soledad Spa, and the former Director of Auditing of Transport, Road, Sport, and Air Airport Infrastructure of the Comptroller's Office, Carlos Varela, are expected to testify. In his testimony, the Minister of Energy and Mines, Fernando Santos, assured that he was unaware of the contracts between the public company Ecuadorian Oil Fleet, the FLOPEC, and the company Amazonas Tanker Pool, the main cause for the accusation against the president. Santos also said that the president did not instruct him to file a complaint about the irregularities in FLOPEC, nor to ask for information about the contract. The former manager of FLOPEC, Oswaldo Rosero, said the contract benefited third parties, and although it should have been terminated, it was renewed. December 2022. The Oversight Commission is continuing to hear witnesses, both for the prosecution and the defense, and after 10 days it will present a report on the case. The Ecuadorian Attorney General's Office requested the provisional detention of the former President Lenín Moreno after he failed to appear before the court handling the Seno Hydro case in which he is accused of receiving bribes for the construction of the largest hydroelectric plant in the country. The former head of state shall have appeared in Quito since March 20th before the National Court of Justice in accordance with the weekly or the bi-weekly appearances regime imposed by the judge Adrian Rojas. Initially, the prosecutor 
Prosecutor's Office requested provisional detention for all the defendants in this case, with the exception of Moreno and 12 other people over 65 years of age, whom the Constitution exempts from this measure, but his failure to appear regularly has led to the Prosecutor's Office to request his preventive imprisonment. In addition to Moreno, the provisional detention Attention also falls on eight other people accused of the same case, including the former First Lady Rocio Gonzalez and their daughter Irina Moreno. In Bolivia, the Prosecutor's Commission on the Sincara Massacre case has issued a formal indictment against the former President Janine Añez for the authorship of crimes of genocide, homicide, and serious and light injuries. The indictment is dated April 17th and has been filed at the first precautionary criminal court of El Alto. According to the Public Prosecutor's Office, Añez is responsible for she appointed herself as president and issued a decree which enabled the armed forces to engage in public order operations in the events of November 19, 2019, when 10 people died during a peaceful protest in Zenkara. The Commission of Prosecutors requested a six-month pretrial detention against Agnes, who is already detained at the Miraflores prison pending ruling on other charges. Costa Rican President Rodrigo Chavez promised a major police deployment in the streets and demanded changes in the country's laws to confront record-setting numbers of homicides that have shaken daily. In a speech in the plaza in front of the country's Congress, President Chavez said too many violent criminals are allowed to walk free and called for more flexibility to extradite Costa Ricans to countries where they are wanted for drug trafficking crimes. In 2022, Costa Rica recorded over 600 homicides, mostly linked to violence related to drug trafficking. The country has moved on to be a pass-through for drugs moving from South America to the United States. The head of state also complained that only one out of every 22 people arrested for violent crimes end up in jail. He also said judges too often let suspects out on bail even if they have a prior record. What we don't want is a Costa Rican, one of the few but very bad ones who seeks to commit crimes abroad and then come to hide here. We say not. Then if there is just cause and evidence for him on a plane and make him go to face justice wherever he has to go to pay for his crimes. When these criminals and these young people know that we are going to catch them and that we are going to prosecute them, they will possibly no longer use them and thus more murders will be avoided. We cannot tolerate that but having soft laws and juvenile delinquents at large. And the Cuban president, Miguel Diaz-Canel, thanked on Thursday all the expressions of affection received after his ratification in office for another five-year term. The president took to Twitter to express his gratitude for the congratulations from colleagues, personalities, representatives of Latin American integration organizations, and other people worldwide after his re-election on Wednesday by the recently installed parliament. Diaz Canel reaffirmed that he will work to maintain the unity of the nation, convinced of the enormous challenges that the past entrusted by the National Assembly implies. The leaders of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Venezuela, Bolivia, China, the leaders of Vietnam, the Alba TCP, among other world personalities, showed their satisfaction for the new inauguration of the Cuban president. The day before, the deputies of the Cuban parliament Parliament re-elected Miguel Diaz-Canel as President of the Republic for the next five years and Salvador Valdez Mesa as the Vice President. Let's take a short break, but first remember you can follow us on TikTok at Telesur English in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. 
On Thursday, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg visits Kiev for the first time since the launch of the Russian special operation in February last year. So far, the exact purpose of Stoltenberg's trip remains undisclosed. A spokesperson of the NATO alliance informed that the press about the visit of the Secretary General to Ukraine and assured to give more information as Stoltenberg visit to Ukraine comes at the final stage of preparations for the meeting at the U.S. military base in Germany in Ramstein, where measures of military support to Ukraine will be discussed before the expected counteroffensive by the Ukrainian army. NATO has repeatedly stressed as an organization that it is not at war with Russia, despite the practical assistance and material support by its members provide the government of Kiev. During his visit, Stoltenberg noted that so far NATO member countries have supported Ukraine to the tune of 150,000 million euros and that they have stepped up their supply of fighter jets, tanks and armored vehicles, all of which is having a decisive influence in the battlefield. Earlier, Russia had sent NATO countries a note in which Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov warned that any shipment, including weapons destined for Kiev, will become a legitimate target for the Russian troops. Lavrov has said that by NATO countries supplying weapons to Ukraine, they are planning with far and has long spoken of direct involvement of NATO countries in supplying weapons and training to Ukrainian troops. And in other topics, the Vatican inaugurated a new arts and crafts academy inside St. Peter's Basilica, which revives a centuries-old apprentice system that trained stone masons, carpenters, and artisans to care for the treasures in the world's biggest Catholic church. This ceremony came as the first 20 students in the academy are halfway through what amounts to a six-month unpaid internship. They attend lectures, participate in hands-on workshops, and lear learn various trades and technical skills under the guidance of the Basilica's San Pientrini, a group of workers who maintain the building. The academy is free to its students and is open to high school graduates. Organizers send their current students, 12 men and 8 women, came from Italy, Peru, Germany and Belarus. The objective is to train young artisans, to teach young people subjects and professions that no one knows anymore that are disappearing and traditions which we do not want lost. So, as was done in the past, the Fabrica di San Pietro is going to be available for the younger generations to hand down the experience, the art, the know-how that has been acquired over five centuries of history. It is definitely a big emotion. Every day, you never get used to the pace of the Basilica. You never get used to the context in that it is truly monumental and recognized around the world. So it is always a big emotion. And the French railway workers gathered on Thursday in what they called a day of railway anger against the pension reform. The unions of the sector call for mobilization with strikes and street actions and acts in emblematic stations of the country, which they considered a preview of the demonstrations to be held on May the 1st on the International Work. Day. The strike will affect one out of five regional trains, 60% of daytime intercity trains and all-night trains. However, the state-owned company SNCF also said that traffic will be practically normal on a national and international high-speed trains. On the other hand, unions' demonstrations against the pension reforms are planned on Thursday in Rennes, Nantes and other French cities. Meanwhile, the French government insists on its adjustment plan. On Thursday, the French finance minister, Bruno Le Maire, stated that he will aim at reducing the French debt by cutting public investment. When the July 2022 stability program was presented, we have set a target for France of a public deficit of 2.9% in 2027 and a public debt of 112 0.5% in 2027. In the new stability program, we want to reduce the public deficit to 2.7% in 2027 and the public debt to 108.3% in 2027, four points less debt than what was foreseen a year ago in the previous stability program. 
I repeat, we are accelerating the reduction of Frank's debt. Now we move on to other topics. In the United States, at least two people were killed when a storm system led to several tornadoes in and around the Oklahoma City metropolitan area. According to Scott Gibbons, a deputy sheriff for McLean County, the two deaths were recorded near Cole, a town of about 600 people south of the city. He also said that the storm cut a path of damage and that a considerable number of homes had been destroyed. Meanwhile, McLean County Emergency Management confirmed a large and extremely dangerous tornado was moving east at 50 kilometers per hour. Soon after the tornado hit that area of Oklahoma City, the National Weather Service issued a tornado watch for portions of six states. These are Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Texas. On Thursday, the head of the U.S. Southern Command, Laura Richardson, visits Chile as part of a tour following her recent declarations on the interest of the United States in the natural resources of the region. Richardson's tour includes Chile, Argentina, and Bolivia, where 60% of the planet's lithium reserves are concentrated, considered the world's white gold due to its wide use in batteries for telephones, computers, and cars. The U.S. general met with Chilean firefighters and is also scheduled to meet with Defense Minister Maya Fernandez. Richard Zahn referred that South America is a strategic place for its natural resources and points to lithium reserves because of its use in the military technology. The Chilean government expects to announce in these days its national policy on the extraction and exploitation of the mineral. Telesur English continues to grow. You can now tune in from 33 different African countries using StoreSat. Dial 461 and enjoy our Latin American alternative broadcast. One final short break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. On Thursday, local media in Sudan confirmed that despite a new ceasefire announcement, clashes persist in Khartoum, the capital of that country. The WHO has raised to nearly 300 the number of civilians killed since the start of this conflict between the military rivals that has left Sudan in one of its worst situations in recent years. A new 24-hour truce began on Wednesday to allow civilians to return safely to their families and get the emergency supplies they need, but it has not been respected. The international community and aid groups are demanding guarantees to be able to provide aid to civilians trapped after six days of heavy urban fighting. And Africa's first molecules vaccine center was inaugurated on Thursday in Cape Town, South Africa, described by the WHO as a landmark move to help poor countries gain access to life-saving vaccines. Authorities emphasize that the center has already established laboratory-scale production of the mRNA vaccines and is currently scaling up and validating the production of Moderna injections on a commercial scale. Elsewhere, they also emphasize that the center's other function is to serve as a guide to manufacturers in poorer countries, helping them to acquire the know-how of mRNA vaccines manufactured in large quantities and in accordance with international standards. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, just over 50% of Africa's 1.2 billion people are fully vaccinated against the coronavirus. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. 
Por Telesur English, I'm your anchor Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.